Welcome back to Know My Boat Building. I'm Mark Bruton, and we are building the Catalina Wherry. In the last episode, we took care of beveling off the stem, stern post, and bottom of the boat to accept the garboard planks. Now that bevel needs to be tuned just so, so that the garboard plank lies fairly along its whole length and at the right angle so that it touches the rib band below. Now we've already rough cut some material for the garboard plank, and I've marked out the aft portion of it. We'll look at marking out the forward portion of it later on in the video. So we're just gonna pick it up from there. We are ready to cut out a plank. All right, time to cut out our first plank. So I've uh, the aft end of our garboard here, and there's a nice little sweep to it back here. Well, what, what is the midships actually? Well, I'll just start by using a circular saw here to buck off the tail end. Leave myself a little bit of extra hanging out here, say, uh, you know, half an inch or something. Okay, now I've popped a couple of our polymer nails into this plank here, so this is doubled up. And I took these marks, which are station marks, and I just quickly transferred them to the other side, just so I had some relatively comparable marks on both planks. There's a lot of ways to cut out a plank, and I won't say that this is the safest method, but in my shop, this is by far the most efficient method to do it. And trust me, I am laser focused on trying to make sure I do this as safely as possible. You have to think about the table saw as essentially being a really heavy inverted circular saw. And we wouldn't hesitate to grab for a circular saw to cut out a plank. So I see no reason why we can't do it this way as well. Of course, this falls squarely into the don't try this at home category. So kids, don't try this at home. This last little bit I'm shaping ends up inside the boat. And so you really won't notice if it isn't like 100% perfect. Remember those rib bands allow us to oversize our plank and then run a laminate trimmer against them to get our finished plank width. But at the very ends where the plank runs over the stem and transom, we need to bring it to its finished width ahead of time. So by the time I get to about there, my rotor work stops. Okay, that looks pretty good. As my plank overhang. Now, I should probably mark that on both sides. I gave myself a little, uh, oh, I've got it already marked on both sides. Yeah, I gave myself a little saw curve just to make sure that I didn't lose that. And that gets trimmed off on the boat. That gets trimmed off on the boat. I have to cut my scarf end. Okay, so what I've done here is I've just picked one edge of this plank to be square. And in this case, I think I picked the inside edge. Yeah, and then I've just used this piece of scrap here that's got, you know, right angles cut on the sides, on the corners, and used it as a square to just square up against one of these faces. So when I cut the mating portion of the scarf joint, I'll match up to that inside curve again on the other piece and square off of it to get the the finished shape. And so while I've already got scarf mostly pre-cut on here, we're gonna have to redo it basically because it's not gonna be exactly right. straight down with the saw, cut both of them at once. There we go. Okay, so that will be our the finished face of our scarf joint. Should really have something here to jack this up properly. Just clean that up a hair. There we go. 
So now that I've cut the tail end of my plank down uh, to where, where the scarf joint is going to be, we can open this up and we can uh, finish off those scarfs. So if I just pop this open now. So this, the side of the lines on it, that'll be the side going against the boat. And this other side will be the side going outside of the boat, obviously. And so we've basically trimmed the corner off of this scarf joint right here. And um, what I can do, what we will do is we'll use our, where is our square? Well, square is not exactly handy. So what I'll do is I'll just take this little marking gauge here quickly and we'll just mark off where the other end of that scarf needs to be. You can do that on both sides. So I did a bit of the work here ahead of time with a router. Now I'm just going to have to finish that up. And that doesn't really take much time at all. What I'll do is I'll set up a nice little uh, working surface here. I don't know, I'd need a little bit of blocking to raise it up off the tabletop and clamp it. And then we'll just do this by hand with a block plane or a bench plane. It'll go really quickly once we get rolling. Okay, well, I just knocked out this little tool here. We'll just call it a, a scarfing bench hook. So cleat on the front just to keep it from going anywhere. I should actually even put some sandpaper on the back of this. That would be a smart thing to do. Here we go. Just a little bit of self-adhesive 80 grit. Just pop a piece at either end. That'll just help keep it from sliding around. There we are. Pretty good. As long as you got some forward pressure, it's hanging on right, right tight. Okay, and I put a little cleat on the back side. That's just to simplify keeping everything in place. I'm just going to take the splinter makers off of here. Just tack this on with some glue and some of the polymer nails. And so my idea here is that we just line this guy up with the, the front edge here or something approximating that. And then we throw a clamp on. So we want to support our feather edge there. That's the, that's the goal. Okay, this is going to be in the way. Just whittle that down some. Now in general, let's do this. Um, I already know that moving forward, I'm going to want my scarfs going from that edge to here. So look at that, my nail ended right in the money. So we'll just throw a couple marks on there. That'll, I'm sure that'll help speed things up at some point. I'm just getting this out of the way. Not, not really using it as a guide. Although we, one could, I suppose. Okay. I know stacking your wood is something that's very popular. And we've discussed this before. I, I, it's okay up to a point, but once I get down closer to a finished surface, I don't find it very helpful. Probably wouldn't kill me to use a larger plane on this too. Let's see what we got. Just use this guy for scarfing. Already down to my line at the back, so I gotta be careful I don't cross that.
Okay, we're almost there. Finish that off with the braces. That's looking pretty good. Uh, so this is, so this is probably one of those few times that you might not want to go dead flat with a scarf. I'm going to leave a slight, slight crown on this, I think. And it is almost, it is almost nothing. But if I put my plane across here, it's just ever so slightly high right here near the center relative to back here. And we're talking like a 64th of an inch. And that's because when I glue this up on the mold, I, I want there to be a little bit of shape. This is gonna be the outside face, so I want it to be slightly convex. So we're gonna leave that like that. And it's only because I'm gluing it in place that I'm doing that. Okay, that looks good. All right. So this one is, uh, let me get my port and starboards right. This is port, this is port. So I'm just gonna throw a P right on there. Pop that up. And we've got the other side, same thing. See, this is what I was hoping for, that I could just butt this guy right up against the, uh, the jig here and have it help support it. Maybe I should put a cleat on the other side so I can go both ways. That would probably make sense. There, so that's starboard. See how quick that is? Much, much less stress than trying to do a four foot wide scarf, I tell you that much. Okay, so this guy is ready to go onto the boat. So let's go on the boat like that. Okay, so the, the, the thing about this now is I just gotta make sure that this is overhanging my um, rib band a tiny little bit. I've given myself about an eighth of an inch of slop. The only place that this is a bit critical is right at the hood end back here where I've taken it to the finished line. So I'll just line that up. And I think I'm going to put a screw in here to hold this in place. Uh, once I've finished getting the front sorted out before we glue it, we'll give ourselves a couple absolutely 100% definite spots that we want to hit. And that'll keep everything in check, make sure it goes together quickly without fussing and fretting. Okay, good. And I wanna make sure my scarfs are happening clear of the stations, just because I wanna be able to probably put a backing block here in order to glue it all together. But that looks really nice. I know what I'm gonna do back here, I think. Let's do this. I'll just pop a finishing nail in underneath the edge of the plank so that when we come back to deal with this a bit later, it's got something to bear against. I'll just mark where that pencil line is, or that nail is. Yep, 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 yep. Yep, 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 yep. Like it. Love it. All right, maybe I'll uh, get ourselves a serum mark right there. So one thing we'll do working from side to side, which would be smart, is to not assume these scarfs land 100% in the same spot each side. So we'll cut these to shape, but we'll leave them a hair long and we'll cut the scarfs to match their mate individually. Yeah, we'll do that. Okay, so. And I don't really care whether or not the sort of pre-scarf pen lands in the project or not at this point. It's so fast for me to knock those out that much lesser concern. I just want to make sure I am beyond 
the end of the scarf. So that's about there. This guy needs to come down to at least there. This guy can land anywhere it wants as long as it covers the whole span. So that's fine right there. In fact, I can clamp it back there. The most important element to doing this, what I'm doing right now, is just trying to get, make sure the plank is lying in the correct attitude that it will be when it's glued in place because that's going to affect the shape. So I don't want this thing like popping way off the mold in funny ways. We want it pretty darn close to where it's going to land. Which is the, the only reason you see me putting so many clamps on here actually is just to try and get it as close to its finished shape as possible. Come on, get on there. For that reason, you, can, you also want to make sure you're, you're kind of rolling the plank down into place, not pinching at both ends first. I mean, you saw me clamp that end and then the other end. But one of the nice things about using these clamps is they have just enough sort of uh, wiggle to them that the plank can sort of shift to where it needs to be on its own. Okay, that looks really good. Now this is where my shaved down pencil is really important because if it wasn't shaved down, it wouldn't fit into this crevice, I can tell you that much. Now I also, well, this could be tricky. Ideally, I want to I want to mark on the inside of the heel as well here. I didn't do that on my other on my aft end, but I'll do it before we glue up. And that's just so I know where to put adhesive. Oh, no, I can't reach it now. Do that on the inside here. And the most important thing is where is the end of that plank? It is right there. Super important. Okay. Now I could just leave this tail end as long as I want, but it's Less work on the router if it doesn't have to cut tons of stuff off. So I'll try and trim it down to an eighth of an inch. So here's one thing that I wasn't anticipating when laying out these planks was that I can't fit my arms in between these strip bands. Which is an argument for going for the wider planked boat for sure. So another argument for using a rib banded mold like this is because I have the rib bands, I can space these molds farther apart. If I didn't have these rib bands and I was using this quarter inch planking, I'd probably want to, you know, choke up on the space between the molds a bit more, making it a lot harder for me to be able to crawl inside there and do any work on the inside, like cleaning up glue joints and things like that. So, um, it's not that rib banded molds are necessarily the be all and end all. Uh, they, they aren't. I mean, they have their own shortcomings as well. Like you can see, I can't get my arms between them, but uh, you know, they can be useful.
All right, so what else do I need to know? Scarf we'll worry about after this is shaped down. Nothing. I think that's it. That is it. Definitely could have been narrower on this forward plank, it looks like. Oh well, these 24 inch wide half sheets, there's only so many strips you can cut it into efficiently anyway, so not worth fretting about it. All right, nail gun. Okay, and let's see. I shouldn't nail it to the plank below. That's dumb. Do one there. Ooh, you know what I didn't do? Uh, I didn't mark my stations. Oh well, I mean, actually I need to come nice and accurate to this stem face anyhow. Just grab a stick. There we are. Let's go knock those out. We'll have to, maybe we'll do that on the bandsaw. Table saw for the rest. Just like before, we're gonna use the table saw to cut this planking to shape. And just like before, we're gonna leave it a little bit oversized. And that's because in this process, using a bat did mold, we can leave our planks oversized, glue them onto the boat, and then trim them to their finished shape afterwards. And that's one of the advantages of using a battened mold. The ability to leave these planks slightly oversized gives us a whole bunch of wiggle room for fitting those planks, and that saves time. Okay, planks in place. So two things I'm going to do. I'm going to mark this scarf, and I'm going to pop a screw into the garbards at either end, into the uh, stem and stern post that's going to lock in the position. So there's the inside of our scarf. and. Um, I don't really even need to mark the outside. I'm going to do it anyway, just because this guy is a little off this line here because it's a consistent width of, what did I make it? Three inches, I think. Yeah, they're three inches. So no matter what, I make them three inches long. Uh, and I do need to make sure I, I come, I, come back on this just a little bit to allow for it to lie flush, of course. So we'll haul it back just an eighth of an inch. Now we've reversed the orientation of those planks to mark the scarf accurately, but those marks need to be transferred to the inside of the forward plank. Yeah, there we go. So for future reference, that's how I'll mark it. I'll do that. That'll be where I cut my scarf to. So that's where I'd put my polymer nail before. So if nothing else, that's gonna mark the spot nicely. I'll do the same thing at the other end. I only need one to really 100% locate where this starts. Okay, the aft portion is cut to shape. The forward portion is cut to shape and we've marked out where the mating scarves need to be. So now we just need to pull the forward portion off and cut that mating scarf itself. And here's my plank that I need to cut the scarf on. And it just occurs to me, uh, it just happened to be the way I laid it out on the boat that I put the aft end on first and overlaid it on this. It's the other side that we need to scarf. So we just got to be very careful that we keep our brain oriented that way. So I'm just going to transfer the start and stop lines. So there we go. That's the where my scarf ends. Of course, you do not cut it there. We need three more inches or else you got nothing to scarf. And I made up this little template that's just three inches wide. It's a bit short for the plank, this particular plank at least. So we'll throw that on there to draw in the, the width of our scarf. And I'll just start by bucking that off. 
I know, right now you're asking yourself why I didn't juggle that plank forward a little bit so that those scarves would align. Well, it's mostly out of habit. I'm used to aligning the planks to the stem or stern post and then worrying about the overlap in the middle, deciding where it wants to go later on. Pre-cutting these scarves obviously was a bit of a waste of time. It was a good experiment and the jig worked out well, but I really didn't need to do it for this project. Butt that up at the end of my little jig here. Clamp that here. And I went and grabbed a deep clamp for the tail end of the up this plank over here. If I don't do that, it swings around on me. And we'll just use a chisel to get it started. Yeah, so one of the reasons, a good reason to go and mark the bevel on the inside is so that I've got these lines telling me I have the inside of the plank here. Because if I didn't have that right now, I'd be questioning which side of the plank I should be scarfing. So we'll just rough this down with the chisel first. I got one of those polymer nails right there in the scarf, which is a little bit hard to work through actually. I guess they I guess they're fiberglass. But I'll have little fine little nicks in all my tools by the time I'm done if I keep hitting those. time I'm doing this I'm being conscious of where my plain iron stops and trying to make sure I'm stopping short of that line. We're down to a feather edge there. Pretty yeah and the feather edge there. So now I can focus on trying to flatten that thing out right to the line. Now that I have feather edges there, I don't want to hit that end as well, so I'm working in the middle. Right. Check my progress. That's just about done. Okay, I'm just going to hollow it out slightly with the block plane. The other side was convex, this one I want concave. Just a tiny bit. That looks good. Lost my layout line of hair, but that's fine. There we go. Done. That's all there is to it. Real simple. All right, now that our garbage planks are ready to install, we have one more critical step that we need to take, and that is we need to mark out our next pair of planks. That means we're gonna take our rough cut planking stock, we're gonna wrap it around the boat, and we're gonna trace above and below the rib bands that define that plank. Now the advantage to doing this is that once we install the plank that's already cut and fitted, and we're waiting for that epoxy to cure, we have the next set of planks that are ready for us to start shaping. And we can get through, not the entire shaping process, but we can get a really good jump start on it. And that in the long run saves us some time. It speeds up the whole process. And if you're clever about how you install the planks that are on the boat, uh, meaning that there's no obstructions to the edge that needs to get beveled, you can possibly keep moving along and get another pair of planks hung on it right away. Now, if we happen to forget to take this step, it's not the end of the world. It just means we have to wait until we can trim off that plank that's already hanging on there, bevel it off, and then we can wrap our rough planking stock around it and trace our plank shape out. However, 
the rib band that is now underneath our adjacent plank, we're going to have to trace on the inside of that and then add that lap width or that batten width to our plank shape. It's a little bit of an annoyance, but it's not the end of the world. I've certainly done it, and I think pretty much anybody else who's used this method has probably done that as well. So I've got a scrap of our plywood here that uh, has a factory edge on it, and right now I'm just trying to get it to sort of lie nominally in the same plane as it would lie when it's a finished plank. And I just want to use that, that factory edge to tell me exactly how wide my rough stock needs to be to make the next one. So this comes out at a, a neat six inches. Um, if I sort of make sure that it's a bit high at both ends, I think we'll just go six and a half would be a safe dimension to go with on this one. You know, traditionally in boat building, we don't want to place scarps in the same location or butts in the same location. But you know, my experiments with glued scarf joints is that they're so damn strong. Ah. I don't see why you you can't. Um, I mean, my bottom scarf right here, my garbage can be scarped here. I think I'm just gonna I'm gonna juggle this out so that the next scarf it it just dances to this side of this line here. Uh, we'll worry about the next one down. Maybe I'll shift those scarfs down towards the ends on the next plank. But for this particular one, I think we're just gonna shove it over a little bit just because it's it's more convenient. I don't really feel like trying to scarf up in these areas, especially back there, because there's just so much more twist in it. So scarfing in areas without twist is definitely the better way to go. So six and a half inches is what I need for planking stock. So we'll cut those out. I suppose I should double check down here that it's that that number will work out as well. Yeah, we'll stick with six and a half. We'll stick with six and a half, that'll be fine. Okay, let's bust out a couple more pieces of plywood four more pieces of plywood, to be perfectly frank. Now we'll just let the camera roll and you can get a realistic idea as to how much time I spend doing this stuff. Okay, so there's my plank offered up in place. It's lying down in the right orientation, it feels like. 
So now it's just a question of tracing it out. And now I need to mark, I need to mark where the top side of it lands on these rib bands, because that's going to be the finished edge of my plank, you understand? Okay, so there is my top sides of it. And then it's got to come down to the bottom sides of the next one. So we mark top and bottom of each one. And I'll just dive inside to mark the rest of this. All right, folks, I think we're going to stop right there. We'll pick this up in the next episode. I want to thank all of you for watching, and I want to thank everybody on Patreon who helps support these videos. If you can help me out on Patreon, I really appreciate that. And you can find links in the corner or down in the description. So until next time, get out to the workshop, get your hands dirty, and I'll see y'all later.